Solving quadratic equations using the square root method. This lesson demonstrates the square root method for solving quadratic equations. While limited when compared to other methods of solving quadratic equations, we can see here that this method can solve equations using the very most famous and important equations of physics and geometry, including Einstein's E equals MC squared, Newton's D equals negative 16 T squared, and to find the missing side of a right triangle using the Pythagorean theorem. Let's take our friend Joe Quadratic back to the general form of a quadratic equation AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. While the square root method is perhaps the fastest and easiest way to solve quadratic equations, it only works under one special condition. The central or linear term must be zero or non-existent. The first equation we'll look at today is m squared minus 9 equals 0. The logical process of solving using the square root method is the same for solving linear equations, and that is to perform operations to isolate the unknown, to get it by itself. In this case, we are going to isolate the unknown m. We don't know yet what m is, but we know that if we square it, or in other words, multiply it by itself, then subtract 9, we will get 0. The first thing Joe will do is take that minus 9 over to the right side of the equal sign. Over here, on the right side, it becomes positive 9. Now we need to look at something we haven't used in linear equations, getting rid of a squared sign to isolate an unknown. What do we do to undo a squared sign? We need to take the square root of a squared symbol to cancel it. And since we took the square root of the left side to get m by itself, we need to follow the golden rule of algebra and do the same thing on the right side. Now we have m by itself. We just need to figure the square root of 9 and we'll have it solved. The fundamental definition of a square root is what number times itself equals the number we're finding the square root of. What number times itself equals 9? 3 is a number that multiplied by itself equals 9, so 3 is our answer. But wait. There's more. Do you remember when we said that quadratic equations can have two solutions? That's the case here. There is another number that multiplied by itself also equals 9. That number is negative 3 because negative 3 times negative 3 also equals 9. Although the two solutions can be written like this, separately m equals 3 and separately m equals negative 3, they're usually written like this, with a plus sign over a minus sign. Verbally, we say that our answer is m equals plus or minus 3. We can put back both 3 and negative 3 for m and see that both are correct solutions. Check. Joe's basketball coach sometimes has the team run laps around the gym floor for conditioning. The court is of standard size with the length of the court being 84 feet and its width 50 feet. Joe tells his teammates that it is 134 feet running from one corner of the court to the other corner along the sideline, and that path is traced here in red. His teammates ask him how far it would be if they would take a shortcut directly from corner to corner instead of going along the sideline. The shortcut is traced in blue here. While Joe doesn't know the answer right away, he knows that it has to be more than the length of the court, but shorter than the total distance around. So it has to be somewhere between 84 feet and 134 feet. If Joe had to guess, he would say about 100 feet. But he knows that by solving a quadratic equation, he can get a very exact number. He remembers the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. He puts in 84 the length of the court for A and 50 the width of the court for B. He squares the numbers and gets 7056 plus 2500 equals C squared. Combining like terms he gets 9556 equals C squared. He solves by taking the square root of each side of the equation. His answer is that the shortcut across the diagonal is close to 98 feet or technically plus or minus 98 feet. Then he thinks, is negative 98 feet really possible? Of course not. So he changes his real world answer to just 98 feet. Fortunately, since Joe guessed 100 feet already, he knows that 98 feet being fairly close is a reasonable answer 
and is certain that he got it right. For the next situation, Joe's coach wants to know how long it will take a basketball to hit the floor of a court after being laid into the hoop 10 feet above the floor. He uses the formula D equals 16 T squared to find the answer. He replaces the D with 10 for 10 feet. He takes the next step by dividing both sides by 16. He cancels 16 over 16. He's left with t squared equals 5 over 8. He takes the square root of each side. He gets very close to 0.79 seconds, which he rounds to 0.8 or 8 tenths of a second. Since negative time doesn't make sense, he calls it just 0.8 seconds. Even that short amount of time can make a difference in a tight ball game where every tenth of a second counts. Let's solve this one with Joe. 5x squared plus 50 equals 0. With his first step, he can go across the equal sign with the 50, making it negative 50 on the right side. So now Joe, Joe has 5x squared equals negative 50. As a next step, he divides both sides of the equation by 5. He cancels 5 over 5. He brings down the result. x squared equals negative 10. He enters the square root of negative 10 in the calculator, presses enter. We get the error message, non-real answer. Why is that? Well, it's because there is no number when multiplied by itself that can be a negative number. So we say that this equation has no real solution. Let's look at this problem. 7x squared equals 3x squared plus 32. In addition, Joe's teacher instructed him to find the simplest radical form. Joe wants to combine like terms and sees that the 7x squared on the left side of the equation and 3x squared on the right side. He knows he needs to move one of the quadratic terms over to the other side, so he subtracts 3x squared from both sides of the equation. He cancels out 3x squared minus 3x squared on the right side. Now he has 4x squared equals 32. His next step is to divide both sides of the equation by 4. He cancels 4 over 4 on the left. He brings down the next step where x squared equals 8. His final step is to take the square root of both sides of the equation. So he has x on the left side, but on the right side he gets this number 2.828 blah blah blah. To get the simplest radical form, he knows that the square root of 8 equals the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. And since the square root of 4 is 2, the simplest radical form will be x equals plus or minus 2 times the square root of 2. Let's look at this problem. 3m squared minus 6 equals 141. Stop the video and solve the quadratic equation. After you solve for M, restart the video to let Joe show you how he did it. Joe's first step was to clear out the minus 6 on the left side by adding it to the right side of the equation. The equation becomes 3m squared equals 141 plus 6, and that simplifies to 3m squared equals 147. He divided both sides by 3 canceled 3 over 3 on the left. Now he has m squared equals 49. Since 49 is 7 times 7, m simplifies to plus or minus 7. m pl equals plus or minus 7 can be substituted into the original equation to prove correct. After checking, he boxes in his answer, his correct answer, m equals plus or minus 7. Remember, the square root method only works whenever there is no linear term in a quadratic equation. This has been Solving Quadratic Equations, the square root method. Thanks for viewing.